Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I'm Aaron Loomis coming to you from the Drew Estate Studio. With me today is June Liu, Seth Geist, John McTavish. How you guys doing today? What's up? What's up? Hey, hey all the snow is melting. The winter has passed. I'm going to be back to reviewing cigars. I'm pretty stoked about that because reviewing cigars in 10 degree uh, freedom is, is just, it's too cold, man. It's too cold. 40 degree freedom is horrible. I, you know, <laughs> the difference between 40 degree freedom, 10 degree freedom is a lot. It's the difference between- I'm sure it is. You know, it's it's like it's like just, 90 is uncomfortable and 110 is oppressive. Like it's just, it's night and day. Yep. All right. So today we are talking about the Aganorsa Leaf Lunatic Torch Visionaries. Uh, the cigar is, uh, I guess, a Toro Extra six and a half by 52. Uh, comes out of the Taps Factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper is Nicaraguan Corojo 99. Uh, binder is uh, double binder Nicaraguan Esteli and Jalapa. Uh, filler is also in this Nicaraguan Esteli and Jalapa. Price point is nine dollars ninety nine cents. Cigar was released in April of two thousand and twenty. So with all that out of the way, June, what was your overall experience like with this cigar? So before I say that, John, getting back to your ten degree versus forty degree is a big difference. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was on the one of the forums that are frequent, and some guy said, "Hey guys, in the winter time, because the humidity is so low." and it's so cold, uh, you guys might want to dip your cigar in water, quick dip, and then after that, light it up. And then I responded, and I was like, "Like you're joking, right? He's like, no, I do it all the time. There's Saka lots of do, people that do it. Saka does yeah. it. Saka Saka does it pours water on top of his yeah. yeah, That's the thing? Yeah. Yeah, if he's, yeah, yeah lots of people. No, like, like, yeah. they, like, you mean like a whole dip, or you're talking just about something? If it's just quick, I've, it's not going to I've, I've it's seen people gonna, yeah. put, it under the, the put it under the tap. They'll just run it under the tap. Oh, quickly. shit. Yeah. That is a thing. Today's the day to do it, June. We have like 7% humidity today. Come on, dog. 7%. There's no way California is 7%. 100%. 100%. Apparently, I don't know about it because we don't ever face that kind of a insane coldness and it's, it's it's even like it's even you know 12 percent here so if you seven percent like you guys is your your eyes i don't know bleeding, can you see this john like can you see where it says no, eight, per, eight percent humidity that's, that's lies Let's see. no it's way it is eight percent eight percent we would you it is eight percent humidity they're, they're, sorry they're, you want to see what it was seven, seven earlier years? today let's see if we can get it this is a great topic you guys talking about weather. Nineties <laughs> ninety. Well you're the one that took us off topic. I asked you what you thought about the yeah, cigar. Okay. Look at that. Ninety seven percent. Yeah. Okay. All, All right, right. Gene, what do you think about the torch? Okay, okay, okay. All right. Uh -huh. So uh I, I thought this was such a miss for Tapsa. And you all know I love my Tapsa stuff, but you know, this was this is heavy handed spice, heavy handed earthiness and minerals, um, you know, big baking spices, minerals, uh, full red pepper spice, um, and, and kind of heating through the cigar, uh, got some like char buildup, um, and that just kind of deteriorated the profile in general. Um, and, and that char just kept on building and building, especially on the finish. And it just kind of caked my palate with it the whole time. Um, I like, I, you know, I was, I was pretty happy when I was done with the cigar. So, um, it was total miss, and it's very disappointing knowing that uh, how typically how consistently good Tapsa is for me. So, all right, Seth, what were your overall thoughts? I'm going to quote Jake Tapper after the first presidential debate and say this was a hot mess inside a dumpster fire inside a train wreck. So, <laughs> this cigar was just fucking terrible. Like, don't my value score is negative 0.09 what does that mean i'll pay people nine cents <laughs> yes you'd pay nine people nine cents per not point. to smoke it yeah <laughs> not to smoke it not to smoke it there you go that's uh, there's I, I have nothing i'm gonna wait till the overall conclusion i'm not breaking down thirds of this all right all right john go for it uh june kind of neatly summarized my experience it, it really was that minerality and earthiness it just kept building it started out okay like the first third i was like well it's a little dark it's not really my thing but it's but it's okay and it just kept building and building and building and building and june i mean you hit it like but honestly this is and it hasn't happened very often but i got in the last third and i was like i just want to be done I just want to be done with this review. And I'm like some sites, we actually smoked the whole cigar. Even if I wanted to put the cigar down, I smoked the whole thing like a champ. Uh, so the, the really unfortunate thing is uh, I went through like half a can of butane just to keep this thing lit. And uh, you know, that's, I think the, the burn on this scored 
Uh, the second lowest score this year and maybe all time for me for developing pallets. I had three relights, which is just crazy. And it, like I've, I've said this before, I have a special humidor specifically for review cigars. It's kept at a lower humidity so that there's no burn issues. Uh, I almost never have burn issues as a result of storage. In fact, like we just finished doing two reviews and the burns were perfect. Um, same humidor. So like, I don't know. And oh, and then on top of it, the, uh, the draw had some resistance to it, which certainly didn't help matters. So hot mess is that, I think that's the best summary. Hot mess. Hot Aaron, mess. walk us through your experience. Uh, for me, the cigar started out well in the first third. I had a good combination of flavors, uh, but getting into the second third, some of the components started dropping out, dropped it down to average. Uh, moving into the final third, uh, some char and some bitterness joined in, knocked it down another notch. Um, you know, the draw, it just, it was tight to start and it just kept tightening up as the cigar went along. I tried a draw tool and it didn't even make a dent in anything. So um, just, you know, it was, it, it had high hopes at the beginning. Like the flavor profile was good. And then the draw just was tight. The flavor profile just degraded. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Like I, I was hoping that maybe a better draw would show something better, but you guys, you know, based on your experiences, you know, June had a, a fantastic draw, but he didn't like the flavor profile either. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if, you know, I think we went for this Vitola because the other ones are crazy ring gauge, but maybe the other ring gauges, maybe they're better. Maybe they're not. I, don't, I don't you know. wish, don't you wish that evil on me, Ricky Bobby? Don't you wish that evil on me? <laughs> so, uh, no, you know, there's, not a, there's not much improvement when you get to the 70 ring gauge. Okay. Then I don't know. I'm not sure what to do then. So I would say okay, logic play. Try, try one if you're, in, if you're intrigued at all and just see what you think before you buy any more than the one. I mean, I can't, I couldn't say even buy a fiver of this to just check out. So, all right, let's get into the scores. Start at the top. Uh, June and I both gave it a 5.20. Uh, John gave it a 4.95. Uh, Seth gave it a um, – I did our scale go that low? It's 3.12. Oh, okay. Damn, dude. Um, all right. June. Zero to 10, baby. Zero to 10. How that 5.20 match up for you, June? Uh, it, it matched up well. I mean, even with pretty good construction um, to be that low in the fives really tells you how shitty the flavor profile was. So, yeah, my 5.2 matches as well. I mean, overall, it was average flavor profile, uh, good in the first third, average second, subpar in the final. But uh, construction is a little iffy with a really tight draw, um, just kind of gets it down into those low fives. So, it's not something I'd go back to. All right, John, 4.95. Yeah, you and I had a very similar flavor experience there, and it started out okay. Um, I actually marked it good average subpar, just like you. But yeah, the, the burn performance, it, it, and when you have a bad burn performance and you're relighting it that mo that often, it's got to be impacting the flavor performance. Yep. We know that for a fact. So uh, that score matches up exactly as it should. All right, Seth, explain this 3.12. I like the shaggy foot and the two bands. That's pretty dope, right? Yeah. It was cool. The bands pop, you know. Um, I think the bands the bands look really good on this. Yeah, it's good marketing. The bands look really good, and like the little shaggy foot, love it. It's a nice hey, touch. Is, they're, they're going outside of their uh, theme. This is the strength is their strength. I mean, leaf is their strength. I think in this one, marketing is their strength. Yeah, yeah. look where that went. look where that got them. Yeah, our highest was a five point two. They should go back. I mean, it was just. It was. I just. I just, the flavor profile was just, it, I, I had to relight it constantly. So, and it was just harsh and it was just like bad earth, burnt, burnt, you know, ash, nasty. Burnt, it was just coffee grounds. Yeah, oh, very, it was awful. Very char, charry. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a shame. Any, any other final thoughts or we you beat this one up enough? No, just. I mean, what do you think it is? Cause I, Seth, you you'll probably know this more than me. Um, so like, when I'm seeing I, a I'm seeing a trend. That's what I'm seeing with Aganorsa. To be quite honest with you, yeah, of this kind of profile, right? I'm seeing a trend in crappiness, and I think if you look yeah. back at Aganorsa over the, you know, let's go from 2010. Even if you look at Illusione, remember there's highs and lows, mm -hmm. and I think they're so dependent on their tobacco that there are these years where we are just smoking bad tobacco crops. That's what I think it is. Uh, it's definitely been. Look at my father, my father, they started using their tobacco, bad tobacco crops. 
Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, no, no offense to like, like it reminds me of um, like when oh, they're going to be offended. I mean, <laughs> don't say no offense. They're going to be offended, man. I don't care. Just say, yeah, I'm going to say this is going to upset you. But like, so, so like Aaron, like when we went to uh, Rocky Mountain Festival, right? And I was super excited to smoke the bonsai, right? Because I figured it, it, it checks all the boxes, right? In terms of like just literature resume. But when I smoked that, I was like, this is not Tapsa. This is not Agonorsa that I know, right? And it was very similar to this. It was actually a lot better than this, but similar in the sense of like very earth forward, very mineral forward, very spice forward, right? Very little soft notes. I got zero citrus, zero natural sweetness. And what I love about... A, a lot of this taps of Corojo stuff especially is they're so good at melding all the soft notes and the the higher you know uh, spicier earthy tones together and it's so much more because, balanced because the leaf is their strength <laughs> correct <laughs> um and man i hope this is not a continuous trend because this is not i, I feel like guys that smoke stuff from tapsa um, are, are pretty geeky in the tobacco and they expect that flavor profile. And if you're shifting away towards something that's more like just spice and earth and mineral forward, like this is not the DNA that you should be kind of, you know, shifting towards. So. It's, it's what the flavor profile is. I mean, what's, what's the last thing really that, what was the other one they did? The Supreme leaf. Yeah. yeah. That was leagues better than that. That was leagues better. Yeah, but still wasn't. But it still like, wasn't. Uh, it still wasn't up to it. No, it still wasn't no. up to it. Right. No. Um, I don't know. Maybe and even like you know Dion using uh within that PCA bundle that he just came out with mm-hmm. to to shift away from Corojo and Criollo and to go with uh I think he went Ecuador Ecuador Habano right on that blend. Um, mm, it's probably cheaper. Yeah, but still, like, it's it's a bit surprising, right? You don't go to your bread and butter, or maybe there is truly a shit crop that he really wasn't able to be fully content with, which is why he didn't do it. I'm not sure. But regardless, uh, this torch was just disaster. Or he just played around with some stuff and it, with Ecuador and Habano, and PCA really wanted it, and he did what everybody else did, and just, sure. <laughs> Lost and found, man. There you go. Well. Oh. All right, if you're just catching this video on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to us. Also, check out the full written review on the website, developingpalettes.com. Follow us on all the social media channels, and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.